Betsy, welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. I'm really glad that you're joining us today. How are you this morning? I'm great. Thank you so much. And uh, glad to be here. Thanks. I am too. And I have a thousand questions I want to ask you. So we may not get to all of those. <laughs> but let's start with an easy one. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do. I do. Uh, I, I'm a counselor. I went and got a master's in mental health counseling after teaching middle school home economics for 20 years. And um, then I then I decided that uh, I, I got some training in several um, energy psychology modalities, and they work quickly and easily to um, change uh, beliefs, uh, negative beliefs on the subconscious level. And uh, I'm trained in EFT, emotional freedom technique, um, Reiki, uh, advanced psyche and theta healing. And I'm not licensed as a therapist. I'm licensed as a minister. In spite of the fact that I have a master's in mental health, I, um, I believe in these modalities, uh, these holistic modalities more than the traditional therapies. I've been doing a lot of reading on this lately. I too practice Reiki mm -hmm. and there's something about that energy. You know, when we look back as a pastor, when we look back in the Bible and we read about Jesus laying hands and healing and the disciples laying hands on and healing, they didn't manipulate bones and muscles. There was an energy transfer there that accomplished that healing. So rediscovering that, even if we use modern terms like EFT and Reiki and all these different things, it's really an old practice that we're re regaining our confidence in and looking back to. And I find that so exciting. And I can't wait to get into some of those with you. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting because the clients I've worked with, things change so quickly and, and almost effortlessly. And... um I mean, I did probably 15 years of traditional therapy for myself and then working with another practitioner within, you know, two visits, we cleared out pretty much my whole childhood garbage. <laughs> um, well, and that's what's so fascinating. Talk <laughs> therapy, it obviously has a track record of accomplishing things, but it mm -hmm. takes a while. And do you find that sometimes when you're talking about things, you get stuck? They're talking about them and reliving them. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, what I do, there is some conversations about it because there's a discovery of what that belief is. And um, so there is some some conversation around it, but you're not stuck in it. In, and that's what I, I really like a lot. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. And um, I like it because it works and gets you out of that you know <laughs> our core beliefs are, are are programmed in the first seven years of our life and you know we could have had a wonderful childhood um and there but we could have taken in a, a belief that wasn't healthy for us one of them particularly it's my experience that their core belief that is limiting is the i'm not good enough belief mm. and mm -hmm. um runs on the subconscious and um, our subconscious mind runs 95% of the time through habit. So our conscious mind thinks, you know, yeah, we're doing this and this, but then there's this belief back there that I'm not good enough and it self-sabotages things. Until that belief is cleared, it, it's going to keep running the program. And, um, you know, Bruce Lipton talks about this in his, in his um, conversations. In fact, I recorded one the other day on YouTube and shared it about how the subconscious mind, those, those limiting beliefs or negative beliefs till we, we change them pretty much run our lives. It sounds like it. 
Now, I know you got into the work you do because of trauma you've experienced, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that teaching middle school probably wasn't the trauma that led you to this work. Although, if so, feel free to tell us about that. But what led you to this? You know, it's so interesting because um, I figured if I could teach middle school that I you know, <laughs> mental health was right, you know, I could handle that. Um, no, it's interesting because I... Um, I uh, didn't have a good relationship with my mother. I, um, she was abusive. Um, and of course, one of my MOs is saying it, it wasn't that bad. Okay. It wasn't that bad. Um, and yet the, the trauma that existed, um, caused me to not feel good enough about myself. Um, and in particular story is, um, when I was little, I was called sissy and my real name is Elizabeth Ann. And I wasn't ever allowed to be called that. And I discovered later on in years that my mom had planned to call me something else. And my dad filled out the birth certificate before she did. So she refused to call me by my name. He named me after his two sisters. And I was called Sissy till I was 10. And, and I asked my mom why. And she said that because my brother couldn't pronounce the word sister. So this little girl decided that she wasn't even good enough for her own name. Mm -hmm. So. I got into all kinds of trouble, poor, poor school grades, bad relationships, you know, you name it. And I was just, I mean, I wasn't that bad though, you know, and, and that was the story, you know, I kept telling myself. Um, and then I married uh, the kid down the street who, who happened to look really good on paper, um, but he was abusive mm -hmm. and I spent 29 years in that marriage. and. Um, I kept telling myself, wasn't that bad, right? Mm -hmm. And um, finally, when my kids were grown and out of college, um, I had gotten help periodically during that time. Um, when my kids finished college, and um, I knew that they wouldn't need the financial support that he offered because he did well. And... Um, I divorced in 29 year marriage. I ended it. And I found myself um, with self sabotaging behaviors. I'd been working on myself for a few years because I knew that I didn't want to attract the same thing in my life. But I saw plenty of women that ended relationships and got into ones that were just as bad, if not worse. And I did uh, manifest the, my current husband, who we've been married 17 years, 16 years now. And, um, He's the love of my life and um, it's a good relationship, good and healthy. But I did the work. Um, and I recognized in that that I was self-sabotaging, you know. I was still people-pleasing. I was still um, second-guessing myself. I was still trying to prove, you know, that he, you know, do things to have him prove that he didn't love me, you know. Mm. Um, so I went and I got more help and I discovered uh, EFT, and then I discovered um, side K, and then um, recently I got really healthy. I got really good, and I started doing this work. And um, the energy was really, I got connected to a higher power, which I choose to call God. Um, and the connection was really strong and really good. And six years ago, um, I got a call in the middle of the night. That said, um, your daughter's been in a really bad accident. You need to drive to St. Petersburg, which was five hours away at the time. That's the worst nightmare. At like three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, my husband and I packing things up, getting somebody to watch the dog. And I just threw some clothes in the, in the you know, shorts, t-shirts, whatever, in the, in the bag. And I'm in my mind thinking, how, how am I going to bring her back to our house for rehab? You know, this is where my thoughts are. Right? Now, I'd done all this work, and I was working with clients on beliefs. Um, but I wasn't working with traumas. Or I was working with traumas, but he didn't know I was working with traumas. Mm -hmm. The traumas would show up in, in the conversation. So we get to the hospital, and it um, doesn't look good. And... Um, I go to kiss her on the forehead and um, 
I hear her in my head. I don't feel her in her body, but I feel her in the room. And I hear her in my head say, say, mom, I can't go back to this body. I can't do what I'm supposed to do in it. She was 34. She was an elementary school music teacher. And um, state of Florida takes, there's three different brain tests they do to prove brain death. Mm -hmm. And she was also an organ donor. And um, they had given her so much blood, they couldn't determine what her blood type was. So they had to wait for her body. Uh, you know, if she's on life support. Her body has to make enough blood so that it's her blood now sure. so that she can do the job of life support. Yeah. So it took about 40 hours waiting mm -hmm. for them to determine whether she was brain dead or not. So her brother and sister show up. Her father's there with his wife. My husband's with me. And, you know, everybody's praying for her to get better. And I'm like, it's not time to work. Just, I can't, I can't, I can't ask that of her soul, of her spirit to, to do that. That's just not for her to come back into that body that was so broken. Um, we found Freedom out. for you in that moment was allowing her to have the freedom she needed. Yeah. You know, um, I believe we all have soul contracts. Uh, when she was first gone, born, she spent six and a half weeks in intensive care and almost didn't make it at birth. Um, I think her soul contract was, okay, if you let me stay for a while, I'll make an hell of an impact. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she was. She was an elementary school music teacher. And um, in St. Petersburg, we had to rent the Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. First tip. 1,400 people standing room only for her celebration of life. And most of these people I didn't know. And so, you know, it, it's, it's been six years and I, I get a little teary. -eyed. And I think one of the things that, that w I want people to know is that we women were warriors and so many times in, in our generation, I know I was taught not to cry, be strong, you know, don't cry. And yet tears are so healing. And, you know, I still have my moments of what I call the ugly cry. You know, where the snot comes out, your face <laughs> looks ugly. and you're like, Oh, I know it well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still have those moments. Of, I, I honor myself enough to have those moments. Mm -hmm. um, and yet the healing work in between, you know, um, is so important because in that healing, I've been able to, um, th the first year I published, I wrote and published, completed, because I'd started it before she passed. Um, I, I published my, my book, which became an Amazon bestseller, you know, and I've been able to do things in between the, the healing process. And when a trigger shows up, because they're still going to show up, when a trigger shows up, I have the opportunity to heal it. Um, it was so interesting. Um, her name's Caroline. And uh, we know that the song Sweet Caroline has become extremely <laughs> popular today. And yes. I know she has something to do with that. Um, I have her violins up here. She was in a mm -hmm. thing played violin. And I have her gratitude jar um, where she had little sticky notes with gratitude in it. Um, but today I celebrate her legacy. You know, my husband and I will be in Home Depot. How many times do you have music piped in Home Depot? <laughs> <laughs> Home Depot and they're piping in Sweet Caroline mm. and letting us know she's she's with us. I was um, right there with you. Yeah, we were, it's interesting, we were on a trip to Key West a couple of days ago last week. And my husband was born and raised in Key West and this grandfather's ice house is down there. It's in a shell store. And um, yes, grandfather's been gone for years now. We walked into the ice house and we're talking to the, the owner about this was his grandfather's ice house. And guess what song came on? Sweet, Sweet Caroline. Caroline. And I'm like, okay. You know, <laughs> too, much, too much. And then Ray and I looked at each other. And in the past, there's time that I would have gotten this 
ugly cry and I didn't. I was at the point where I'm celebrating the joy of her life. Yeah. Um, so those are, those are really important to celebrate the legacy that she left behind. Um, Absolutely. I have so many questions I want to ask you. Okay. I want to ask questions about trauma. And, you know, what does trauma really mean? I wasn't in a war, but I feel like that there's still trauma that I experienced. So I want to ask you about that. And I want to ask you about these different therapy names that we're tossing around, Theta, EFT, all these different things that for a lot of us sound kind of far out, but <laughs> that are having so much success in folks. So where would you like to start? Let's talk about, about trauma is, um, you know, it, let's face it, everybody in the world in the last two years has experienced trauma with the pandemic. Okay. Storms, hurricanes, losses, job losses, divorces. Um, uh, there's a whole slew. Childhood, you know, uh, childhood abuse, uh, domestic violence. You know, we know that two out of five women suffer from domestic violence. And it's not just women. My father was injured by his ex-wife. Um, had severe, severe head trauma. And eventually it, it lost it him his life but um another trauma i think and, and i can go through you know my first husband was a pilot and he he had a helicopter crash and then he had, had a crash where he jumped out of a burning plane in the middle of the night middle of the ocean my son uh son was in a in a um a house fire and he got out with his clothes and the house burnt down and my oldest daughter was run over by a car and survived and i mean there's her those were traumas. You know, my mother had cancer and passed away. Um, losing someone that you love. There's a whole slew of traumas that can occur. And, um, you know, I think I can really identify with what you were talking about earlier when you said, oh, but it really wasn't that bad. We do that. I know I do that. When I consider things in my life and I start to think of them as trauma, I react with, oh, it wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't like I was abused because a lot of people are. It wasn't like, and then fill in the blank. But we discount the suffering that we have. Yeah. And Father Richard Rohr is one of my greatest inspirations. He said that there are two paths to enlightenment. One is prayer and the other is suffering. And we can take a couple different approaches in suffering and some lead us to be better and others will lead us to a point of being wiser and more integrated in our spiritual life. So suffering is a part of life, and we tend to discount it. Why do we do that? Um, why do we do that? You know, that's a good question, and I, I don't know. I know that when we discount it, the energy of the situation stays in us. Because everything's energy. Mm -hmm. And and all of our emotions have an energy. In fact, there's a, a vibrational scale, an energetic vibrational scale that rates them all. And when we're at the highest vibrational, we we attract more. And now, tell us where we could look that up if we're interested in knowing more about that. Um, would I Google emotional energy scale? I would put, um, emotional vibrational scale. And Google it, and there's pictures. Go to Google Images, and there's pictures of it. Um, with uh, Dr. Hawkins did 20 years worth of research on it. Um, Fascinating. And and so, and here's the thing: is depression is a lower vibration than anger, because hmm. anger at least has passion. Sure. So these energies, this energies, the feelings are still there. We just shove them down and cover them up, wallpaper them over, and make sure. Oh well, I'm okay. Or we think we do anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I think one of the most common things that people people ask us, are we okay? Yes, I'm fine. Well, you know what fine means. Um, <laughs> we're not. We're not. Mm -hmm. when we say that. Um, it, and, and actually, the so traumas have us shine the light on what we need healed. And I, I don't like using the word broken. I don't like, it's just stuff that has occurred that we've taken in. We do need to do the healing work so we can get to that next level of being who authentically divine we are. 
because we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Yeah, our body is just the way our souls express itself. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just skin. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, there's so many different types of traumas. Um, yeah. And, and, and most women suffer them. And, and, and men do too. I just, my focus is on women right now. Um, I have worked with men before. Um, but my, my target market is, was women and because I can identify with what's, what's happened with me. So I hear a takeaway from this part of the conversation is one, don't deny the suffering. Don't deny the traumas. I mean, maybe don't go and build a house there and plan to live there, but don't deny it or discount it. No, don't deny it. Don't discount it. But don't live in it. You know, there's there's a difference between saying, okay, I'm feeling like shit. Th this happened to me. I'm entitled to my, to feel what I'm feeling, feel it, get through it, and move on. And and then if you need help getting through it, um, ask for help. I It's really interesting because I have a testimonial on my website from a woman that she had witnessed her, she had, she has pets. She doesn't have children, but her pets are her babies. So she's very connected to them. And she witnessed one of her dogs being run over by a car and killed mm -hmm. instantly. And um, her testimony said that um, I saved her life. Um, she was feeling so strongly about it that she was suicidal. Mm -hmm. And um she said, I, she said, I said my prayers and I heard call Betsy. I called Betsy. Betsy spent five minutes with me. Um, we did some theta healing on it. And she says, and I have never had the feeling of pain as strong as, as I have had since then. Um, and, and that was amazing. Well, let's jump into some of these therapies. Most of us are familiar with talk therapy, and there are a lot of us that are still suspicious of that. But let's talk about the other range of options that are out there. Uh, my first, the first thing I got certified in is called emotional freedom technique, and it's also known as meridian tapping, tapping on your meridian points. And I, when I work with clients, I send them the information on how to do it because all you need are your hands. And you don't need anything else. Um, and if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're feeling this anxiety or whatever, you can do your tapping. And I send a version. It's called a faster EFT. And it was designed in the 80s by uh, Yuri Craig. And he worked with um, Vietnam vets with uh, 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 with uh, PTSD. Yeah. PTSD. Very successfully. I mean, some of these men hadn't slept in years, and now they're sleeping and working normal lives again. And and this was back in the eighties. He did. He worked with it. So that was the first tool I learned, and it's helped me with a variety of things, even food cravings. Um, <laughs> Say that again now. Even food cravings. <laughs> Making notes to myself over here. <laughs> I fell and broke my kneecap in um in the waiting room the emergency room i'm i'm doing my tapping you know and um afterwards somebody said oh, i heard a broken kneecaps is the most painful thing in the world and i'm like you know i was kind of joking around with the nurse <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> and it healed in six weeks so there you go um and then the other thing i learned right after that i learned something called psych hey and Bruce Lipton has this on his resource page. Actually, he has all of these on his resource page. And um, Psyche is a combination of brain gym. Um, of what? Brain gym. Brain gym. Brain gym, kinesiology, and um, self-hypnosis. And brain gym works on cross-body you know, left hemisphere mm -hmm. of the brain and right hemisphere of the brain and balancing the brain. So okay. using my right hand to touch something on the left side of my body or vice versa. Okay. Yeah. Crossing your legs. And it's, it's interesting because when you, uh, if elderly people could do cross body exercises, their memories would probably be better. They probably wouldn't age as fast. Um, 
Wow, that's really that's really yeah. significant. Cross, cross body movements are amazing. Um, a friend of mine um, that that was she does a uh, psyche also. Her son had suffered an extreme uh, brain injury from a skateboard accident, and he's finished college because of the the brain gym stuff he's done. Yeah. So Huge. if I'm sitting in a chair, I can take my right hand and touch my left shoulder. And I can take my left hand and touch my right shoulder. And well, the best way to do it is you take your hands like, so like, cross your hands and kind of like, kind of like your hands like this, like this. Kind of okay, so I'm back. grasping them together, interlocking my fingers, and kind of putting them inside out a little bit. Want to cross them first? Uh huh. Extend them out from my body and cross my hands. And then, and then like this, and you could just set them. And then hold them into cross, myself. Cross your legs. Okay. That's part of that. That's a cross body movement. That's um, one of the movements in Psyche. Um, and then we go in and we muscle test beliefs. And muscle testing, um, there's several ways you can muscle test. Um, you can stand up and close your eyes and then make a statement. I usually start with yes, and your body moves forward for yes. And you say no, and your body moves backwards for no. Um, Are you yeah. serious? This really happens if you say yes, your body kind of leans into it a little bit. <laughs> close my eyes. Okay, for those listening to the podcast, Betsy is standing up in her in her space here. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, yes. Okay. All right. Oh, no, no. Okay, so as she said yes, her body moved forward. And as she said no, it leaned back. That's one way of doing it. And then this is another way. You take your fingers like this and link them and try to pull them apart. And again, when you muscle test, you need to be hydrated. Make sure you have enough water. And uh, the other one is yes, yes, yes. And pull it apart. No, and it comes right apart. Um Okay, so so for those who are listening to the podcast, you may want to jump over on YouTube later. And it's at minute 26 and a half or so thereabouts. And check out these examples that she's given. It's really fascinating. And again, kinesiology, um, Dr. David Hawkins did a 20-year research about kinesiology and muscle testing. And it works. And I use it all the time. Um, I'm at the store shop. <laughs> Shopping, I'll, I'll say this is healthy, and no, oh, it's not. <laughs> um, but what what we do is we muscle test if there's a belief on the subconscious. For example, you've heard about saying affirmations. Mm -hmm. um, I love Big myself. Fan. Yeah, um, I love myself unconditionally. Well, if your subconscious, like mine, didn't believe that when I the very first time, and I've been through therapy, I've been through so much. I was with my side K um, practitioner. She had me close my eyes and muscle test myself um, on, um, on I love myself unconditionally. And it was, no, my subconscious did not believe it to be true. Now, I could have said it in the mirror consciously to myself. It would have taken a lot of time for that to happen, for that to change. Because repetition mm -hmm. does change it. But you got to do it a long time. Consistently. Well, with Psyche, within two minutes after we did the process, and we muscle tested again, my subconscious believed it be, to be true. And <laughs> so somehow using our body along with our minds and our emotions and our spirits has a way of breaking through all of those layers and barriers and neural connections and getting to the very fundamental places in our being. It's so cool. <laughs> I love that. That'll preach, you know. <laughs> and then and then and then i discovered um and then and so i was using psyche with people oh my gosh it just it's so much fun because it works you know and and those beliefs will show up and and so we're preventing the self-sabotage and people were getting um successful in their lives Okay, so just for keeping track of things, the EFT, the Emotional Freedom Technique. Technique. That's the tapping on our meridians. The Psych K that you're talking about, that's the cross-body movements and things. And we can yeah. 
watch a little video or and self self hypnosis. Um, it talks about it. it. You know, it does take training to to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not certified as a teacher in it, but I am certified to use it with my clients. Okay. Um, yeah. So just so, wanting to stay on track there. <laughs> and then after Caroline passed, um, I was I I went and I got trained in. I'm a Reiki two practitioner, and my Reiki two practitioner is a nurse. She no longer does nursing. She's she does sound healing and Reiki and Theta healing. And I heard her talk about Theta healing. And Theta healing. Uh, works is very similar to Psyche K, except for there's four levels. Your core level, which is your subconscious level, which was what Psyche K did. But then it can change it on the genetic level. What? Yeah. And then it can change it on past life's level or soul agreements that you made. Maybe you made a soul agreement that you needed to learn this thing and you learned it, but it's still the program's still running. So you can heal all those on all four of those levels. And the difference is that you go, that I go into and my client goes into a theta state, which is a self-hypnosis type state. And we go up to God creator. The only difference is you have to have a belief in a higher power of some kind. Mm-hmm. This won't work with an atheist. So we And up- we can call that higher power, whatever it is that emerges from our belief system. Right. And that's, this is what I do. I, it's not my job to convince you to call it what, you know, I ask my clients what, before we even begin, what do you call your higher power? You call it God, okay. whatever. I personally refer to creator of all that is. Mm-hmm. It's very open-minded creator of all that is. Cause I, for me, <laughs> that's just sure. But for each person, they, I had somebody, yeah. they refer to it as Jesus. I had, you know, so we went up, we, so we go up, we go up and we ask for that being to do the healing work. And then there's a very specific process. And in that process, I ask permission from my client for each step. And then I ask creator God to do that for them. Mm-hmm. And then when we're done, we muscle test. I also ask creator if there's anything that, needs help with they don't know about and i don't know about and it's really important that um i actually have practice sessions with other people that do theta healing because it's practicing knowing what's not my voice but Mm -hmm. what's what's coming from creator and not me Um, Mm -hmm. anything that is not loving and kind doesn't come from creator Mm -hmm. it's all loving and kind and you know, my predispositions or my thoughts about a situation, you know, my doesn't belong there. I have to t- trust in my connection to creator. Um, sure. And it's really cool. Um, mm. I had a situation where uh, I felt stuck with my business. I was able to manifest money in my life, but it wasn't coming through my business. And I was like, okay, what, what's that all about? And we were in a practice session. What came to me is um, women aren't supposed to make money in their business. Mm. Like, where did that come from? Yeah. And we did the Theta Healing. And apparently there was an ancestor three or four generations back who was male, who had a mother that was a prostitute. And she did very well. She made money in her business. Yeah, but he didn't like it. It was embarrassing. It was, you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where that belief came. Now, did I know any of it? No, I had no idea. (laughs) But that energy was passed down. But that energy was passed down. That belief was so strong, it was passed down. Yeah. Yeah. And boom, we changed it. We healed him first and then healed me. And I'm back to making money in my business. (laughs) So there is so much out there that we don't yet understand. A lot of things aren't tangible, uh, touchable, seeable, maybe even knowable, but we can see the fruits of it in our lives and in the lives of the people that we love and serve. Yeah. 
And I think that you've shown us a lot of those things. And some of those might be too much for some of us and others might be, show me more. I want to dig into this and learn more. So in the show notes, I want to have several links so that we can find all of those things. Okay. I'll make sure those are in there. And Betsy, where can we go to find your book, to follow you on social media, your website? Where can okay. we learn more about you? Add one more thing. I had a conversation mm-hmm. earlier today with someone about being in that positive energy. You know, in spite of all the crap that's happened to me, I know that I'm, I've worked through it. I'm not, I'm not covering over it. I've worked through it. But it's important to be in that higher joy. That's, I believe that's what we're called to be, examples of joy. And that energy, you know, when we're on our phones, and that, no. That that energy is going out to a satellite up in the middle of the universe. Mm -hmm. And then it's coming back down. So that energy of joy or or whatever it is that we're talking about on the phone, that's huge. So for me, when I'm on that phone or I'm on my computer, I need to make sure that I'm in a space of of joy. And and I'm not ignoring the other stuff, but... that's so important because I'm sending it out there. Magnify what you want magnified. Yeah, so many times you just think of who yet. But no, there those satellites are out there. <laughs> <laughs> but where can you find um my website is betsyrotham.com. And on my website I have you can click on the link to buy my book. It is on Amazon. It's called Making More Than Lemonade Out of Lemons. And no, it's not a cookbook. <laughs> um, and then I have some virtual radiant healing cards. They're like the cards that we would deal out, but mm-hmm. they're you download them on your phone, your laptop, or your your tablet. So they're virtual. And then I have some blogs, not blog posts on there. I have some samples of some speaking events I've done. Uh-huh. The other information. And uh you can we have- 15 minute discovery call with me to determine whether you want to work with me. Nice. Can we find you on social media? Are you on any social media platforms? I'm on Facebook. In fact, I have a, I have a private group called soulful journey Mm -hmm. and I try to give a lot of positive information on, and I'm on LinkedIn and, um, I'm on Pinterest. (laughs) (laughs) I like Pinterest. One of my hobbies is making jewelry. Uh-huh. And, um, and so I just, it's a great bulletin board for me. I just, it's like, let's go through a magazine. So those are three that I'm on. Well, those will be linked in the show notes. Are there any parting words that you would have for us today, Betsy? Yeah. You know, being strong isn't about putting up a false front. Mm-hmm. Being strong is facing the traumas and feeling the traumas and healing them. Um, And that's what being strong really is. So what I heard you say is lean into the difficult and uncomfortable situations and experiences of life so that you can overcome them. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you. Thank you.